friends, welcome back. Today we're heading outside to decorate our front porch for fall. If you are new, my name is Amy and welcome to Simply Our Home. I hope that you enjoy it here and get some new ideas for decorating your porches this fall. Now I'm wrapping up my fall decorating series, so if you missed any of those videos, I'll go ahead and leave them down below in a 2023 decorating series playlist so you could go and catch up. As always, if you do enjoy today's video and haven't already, I hope that you would consider subscribing and also go ahead and give me a big thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. All right, friends. Well, let's go ahead and head outside and do some decorating. I hope you enjoy it. It is a perfect fall day. The temps are in the mid 60s and as you can see the leaves on our trees in the backyard are starting to turn. There are touches of oranges and yellows appearing and in no time it will be a gorgeous vibrant fall masterpiece painted across our terrain. Now this past weekend, Scott and I took the time to clean and tidy up our entire porch area. He removed the summer planters beside our front door. He power washed the siding and concrete and steps leading up to our front porch. And he also brought down our furniture to brighten and refresh them. He first tried the teak oil, which didn't seem to work, and he ended up actually staining them, which I will share a little bit later in today's video. Now, as he is working on all of that, I'm going to go ahead and strip off all of our seat cushions and get them into the wash. Over the summer, our fur baby Nyla has jumped up onto the couch and slumbered during the summer months, and so there's dog hair and lots of little paw prints that need to be treated and get those into the wash so that they come out nice and clean before we decorate our space. As far as all the covers, to get them clean, I love to use the Bissell Pet Pro Oxy Stain Remover. And this solution gets them looking nice and clean and almost brand new. It's almost shocking. This solution is great for removing pet stains, but I've also used it to remove spaghetti sauce, blood spots, pin marks, and grass stains. So I just absolutely love this stain remover. I'm first going to hit any spots with the spray and then take a small bristle brush to scrub the solution down deeper into the fabric. Once in the washer, I'm going to use some Tide Booster Pods along with about a fourth of a cup of bleach. And this solution, I am always super shocked. It comes out clean and almost like they're brand new every time. While these are in the wash, and since Scott has removed the furniture, it makes it so much easier to get to the windows. So I'm going to use my favorite glass cleaner, which is the Sprayway brand, to clean the glass. Now, since I do have several new faces here, I wanted to share one of my favorite tips, which is a way of cleaning your windows so that you know which side those pesky streaks are, and it'll save you a little bit of time when you're re-cleaning them. So try this and see if it works for you. When you're polishing, decide whether you're going to go horizontal or vertical on the inside or outside. So you're going to do that different on both sides. Here, I'm going to choose horizontal on the outside. And that way, when you look through your window, you're going to see which direction those streaks are going. Then you can go and follow up and re-clean that side. And it'll save you a little bit of time when you're dealing with those pesky streaks that we sometimes have from time to time. So definitely give this a try and let me know if it works for you. To wrap things up on this day, I'm going to go ahead and remove the wall art that I had hung here on the siding for summer. Now I'll go ahead and link both the siding hooks as well as the artwork, but I love using these siding hooks because it allows me to add artwork to a bare area. And so for fall, I'm coming in with a gorgeous copper accent in this wall art 
chickpeas that came from Hobby Lobby. And you know me, I absolutely love copper for fall and I think it fits the space perfectly. This year, instead of doing a full garland around the whole front door, I decided I wanted to keep it a bit more simple and just do a swag at the top of the door. In order to do this, especially on brick, what I have found is this great tip where you use hot glue and a command hook to actually secure your garland, your wreaths, or anything else to your brick. So what you do is you just apply that hot glue to your command hook, stick that to the brick, and then they will be secure all season long to hang your garland, wreaths, pictures, whatever you would like on your brick. And all you have to do is remove them when you're done and it doesn't cause any damage to the brick behind it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Go ahead and get these hooks hot glue to our brick and then I'll work on creating a swag that is much like the garland that I have over on our mantle so that everything will look nice and cohesive from the start of our front door throughout our home. Don't forget this is my last decorate with me for fall before I share my entire fall 2023 home tour that will include a few areas that we didn't get to decorate together so that should be fun. Be on the lookout for it coming next week. So to start out the swag, I'm coming in with my favorite garland, which is the Green Baby's Breath from Hobby Lobby. And that's kind of just my background and something for the other picks to kind of nestle inside. So I'm going to get that as the base and then we'll start adding in some maple leaves in a orange color towards the center and then as we move outwards, we're adding in a deeper red color kind of to get an ombre effect. Now that the swag is all done, it's time to continue with those beautiful pops of color and I'm adding a gorgeous wreath that I got from Kirkland's last year. Now if you happen to miss my entryway decorate with me for fall, I also shared a few weekend projects, two of which were to paint the surround around our front door as well as to refresh the front door with a new coat of urban bronze paint color and so the door is really looking great and that wreath just pops right off of it. Always keep that in mind when you're choosing your wreath. If you have a darker color door and you really want your wreath to stand out, choose a lighter color like I did or do just the opposite if you have a white door. To the space in front of our brick that is right under our entryway light, I'm adding this gorgeous 3D pumpkin that I found from Joann's. I love its woven texture and it brings instant warmth to this area without overpowering the wreath. Next to the little narrow corner beside the door, I'm adding another Joann's find, but this one from last year with this hay pumpkin porch board. To the opposite side of the door, I'm bringing back in that copper pot that I found as a set from TJ Maxx that I had here for summer with that beautiful fern. But for fall, I'm going to be adding the one and only mum that I purchased. This one is a large yellow one that was from Sam's Club that was just around $17. And what I'm trying to do this year is just to simplify everything, not make it so hard to try to upkeep with watering and rotating 
the pumpkins so that they don't rot and I just hate getting rid of all of those pumpkins at the end of the year and also it draws a lot of our wildlife which I kind of don't want to bring right to our front door so this year you're going to see I'm bringing in more faux pumpkins so that I can actually reuse them from year to year. One of the fastest and simplest ways to decorate your outdoor space is to add a seasonal doormat. Now I love the look of layering. So first I'm adding a rust colored throw rug with fringe, getting that all nice and straight. Then to the top, I'll add a simple pumpkin core doormat with the help of my fur baby Nyla, which I think she approves. If you remember, I found these super realistic large pumpkins from Michaels that I shared in that video. If you happen to miss that one, I'll go ahead and link it up above. But I want to place them here on the narrow side of the doorway, and I think three will be just enough to keep it from being cluttered. And I'm going to stack the orange one on top so that the grouping looks more casual, fun, and collected. Swinging over to the opposite side, I'm coming in with these woven textural pumpkins that I found from Home Goods. Again, I don't want them to compete with the bright, beautiful color of the mum. I want it to be the focal point. So that way, bringing in these textural pumpkins are going to complement the whole arrangement and look more high end. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, Scott off camera slightly sanded and added a light walnut stain to give the furniture a darker, rich tone. So going from this dull, weathered gray, here is how it looks now. Absolutely gorgeous. So now I'm excited to get the freshly laundered seat covers on and then add all the cozy textiles to the spot. One little tip that I have found that makes it so much easier to return your inserts, whether that be a seat cushion or pillow, into your cover is to taco the insert. It's much easier to put into the cover, not to mention it's a lot quicker too. To cozy up the space, I always like to add a throw blanket. This one is a plaid one that is super soft. I love having a blanket here to snuggle up with while we chat during these colder fall evenings. Next, I'm coming in with these clearance lumbar pillows that I found from Lowe's. They were actually in their summer decor, but they were clearanced and I thought that the color was perfect. It's a rich rust color with striping and I think they fit the rockers perfectly. Moving on to the wooden coffee table, I'm going to add a round woven tray and place it a little off center and that way it'll reduce the chances that it might get wet. To the tray, I'm adding a group of three. First, I'll add this vessel, which I DIY'd and gave it an age technique, along with some white pompous grass. This will add both height and visual interest to hopefully draw your eye from our front door down to this end of our long front porch. Then secondly, I'll add a copper pumpkin that I found from TJ Maxx. And then the third piece, I'm adding a beautiful candle from Bath & Body Works for a soft ambient glow at night and a perfect fall scent to complete the coffee table vignette. In this space between the two windows, we have a blanket ladder and I wanted to try something a little bit different. I have these X hooks that came as a set from Amazon and I'm taking the largest of the two to hang a beautiful autumn print that I got from Kirkland's. This print has all the special fall words that make the season great. Autumn is my absolute favorite season. It's a time to wind down and really makes me seek comfort. It's a transformation into cozy sweaters and plaid shirt days. 
we shift away from the bright bustle of summer to mellow, cozy evenings filled with hot spiced lattes and comfort food. You'll have to let me know what are your special feelings about fall. Each year, I like to change things up a bit and decorate a little bit differently. And so it's fun to look back. I'll go ahead and link last year's fall decorate with me here on the front porch. That way you can get even more fall decorating ideas for your front porch area. Now, as far as the pillows that I'm decorating with this year, I'm bringing in two large pillows that came from TJ Maxx and then two pillow covers that came from Amazon. I'll also be adding a long lumbar style pillow that says, welcome to our pumpkin patch that came from Kirkland's. And I will change and rearrange the placement of the pillows until I get it just right. I also wanted to point out that the hanging baskets of these gorgeous, realistic faux flowers that I bought from Amazon and hung early in the summer are still going strong and looking beautiful. So I'm going to continue to use these until I decorate for Christmas. All right, friends. Well, that wraps up today's decorating on our front porch. I hope that you enjoyed it. I really love how it turned out. I think it'll be a special place for us to go and just sit, relax, listen to the birds, and maybe even read a daily devotional. So with that being said, you know how I love to end our time together by sharing a daily Bible verse. So today's Bible verse that I'm sharing comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 56 through 58. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to the God. He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is never in vain. All right, friends. Well, I thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Happy fall, and I'll see you in my next one. Take care and God bless. Bye, friends.